Hi, I'm Patrick Hopper, publisher of Embedded Computing Design, and we're back at Embedded World in Hall 1500 with the Trusted Computing Group. And I'm here with Infineon and Wolf SSL today, and we're talking TPMs. So, uh, Paul, welcome. Welcome to the hey, show here. Thanks. Yep, yep. <laughs> and tell us a little bit more about Optima and what new features you have uh, for the Infineon TPM. What new features? So, we have the new SLB 9672 and the 9673. That's our SPI and I2C TPMs that we provide since one and a half year. And the new features that we have, more RAM and more user space for <laughs> store some secrets. We have GPIOs and we add a new PQC scheme for our update procedure, so. Excellent, and then, so tell me about the new, In Infineon's doing the new firmware updates. Uh, so. For open source, yep. No, uh, we decide uh, as Infineon that we want to bring up our firmware update possibility to all our customers, not only on the NDA customers. So we, we are in the process to open source our update procedures and then, yeah, <laughs> David from Wolf SSL yeah. gets a glimpse of that. So we have sometimes meetings and then he said, wow, it's really, really nice. So David's the founder, or is the founder of the Wolf TPM. Yeah. And so tell us what we're doing here, David. Okay, so uh, Wolf is a cell, we're an open source software company, and uh, I'm the author of the Wolf TPM library. And uh, one of the really great things about TPMs is they're standardized, right? So the Trusted Computing Group, you know, they, they collaborated to come up with a scheme to standardize, um, to standardize the interface to the TPM, so the commands and the responses. Uh, but one of the questions we get a lot is, you know, how do you update the firmware on a, on a TPM in the field, right? So one of the things that Wolf TPM does really well is it's, um, it runs in embedded systems in bare metal where you have very limited resources. Uh, most of the TPM stacks are written for Linux, right? And those are very high-end systems and that's one thing. But if you're running on a small embedded target and there's an, you know, some update for the firmware on the TPM, up to now there hasn't been a way to do that. Um, but luckily Infineon has open sourced their uh, software update scheme for their firmware. Um, and they actually thought in, ahead and used post-quantum algorithms. So they used XMSS, which is a stateful okay, hash space yep. signature scheme. And uh, we've integrated support for that into Wolf TPM. And so now you can actually update the firmware. And, and we put together a demo that's basically an HTTPS web server. Uh, it shows you the capabilities of the TPM and then you can upload, there's a manifest file, which is basically the signature and then the actual firmware file. And it gets sent down, you can stream it straight down to the TPM. Um, the firmware manifest file is about three kilobytes, and the, the firmware file is about 900k for the for the <laughs> firmware. Got it. Um, but yeah, I mean that's what we've got. Uh, Infineon's been really great open sourcing that part of the the software. It's a huge step. Um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, great. We'll stop by Hall 1500. Come see Trusted Computing Group and our good friends at Wolf SSL in Infineon. Thanks. Thank you.